Hey everyone, Nick from Nick's Crossing here. Welcome back to the train room for an awesome review. In today's video, guys, we're going to be talking about and reviewing this brand new Maryland and Pennsylvania doodle bug from Lionel's Lion Chief 2.0 Plus line. So here we go, everyone. All aboard. All right, guys, so we finally got one of my favorite road names in doodle bug form, the Maryland and Pennsylvania. Uh, it's one of the most um, important railroads in our local history here in the York County area. It's a great railroad, had a interesting history, troubled past and all that, and now defunct. Uh, most of the tracks now that were MPA have been ripped up. What's in York right now is actually operated by York Rail Company, YRC, which is a subsidiary of the Genesee Wyoming Company, GNW, and all their stuff is orange and yellow. So we now don't have the black and yellow scheme anymore, but it is what it is. But the MPA started back all the way in the late 1800s of, you know, a bunch of mergers. Uh, they all ran uh, narrow gauge railroads. They wanted to standardize. They were tired of the competition. Let's, they're like, let's work together. Let's do this. So in 1901, they finalized and everything, ran trains from Baltimore to York County, Pennsylvania. Now to go from Baltimore to York took you about four hours on the train. Um, it was a full 77 miles through winding hills, over creeks, through rock cuts, and you also had to battle other trains. For the most part, they ran a single track main line. So if you guys have ever been up to Strasburg, you know, um, Cherry Crest or uh, Groff's Picnic Grove, you have to wait for the train to pass. Well, that's how the MPA <laughs> ran to Baltimore. So if you're just waiting at a siding and you're looking at your timetable saying, hey, there's going to be a train, we have to stop here. And you have to wait for that train to show up so you don't collide with it or anything like that. And that's how they ran. They also ran signal free. So it was all dependent on the times table. So uh, it's pretty crazy, but we don't do that now with railroads. Everything's computerized and PTC, all that fun stuff. But it's just the old way of doing it. Now, the MPA became defunct in the late 1950s. A lot of their equipment was left there to die. Uh, after the building of Peach Bottom Power Plant, all the cars and stuff were just turned over into the woods. Some of the cars were parted out to collectors and such, but a lot of their stuff was scrapped or just left there to rot in the woods, which is really sad. But anyways, guys, we're going to go over the doodle bug just a bit. We have a ton of history, all these notes right here on the doodle bug. So let's get into this. All right, guys, so going all the way back to 1909, the Maryland and Pennsylvania Railroad was trying to innovate a way to transport passengers efficiently. Now, they thought passengers were a net loss compared to their freight service, so they were looking at motor cars and such to go from Baltimore to York and back to Baltimore one trip every day. Now, from what I heard, they ran about 16 trains a day uh, on the busy season, eight or nine trains on the weekends. So they were rocking and rolling trains. They also had to meet in the pocket, things like that. But with a steam engine, it's very costly. So a motor car, they thought probably, you know, conductor, engineer, brakeman, that's all you need on the train or someone to take tickets and you're good to go. So uh, the motor car idea was a fantastic idea, probably sparked from the uh, trolleys in Baltimore and such in York that were here. Um, you know, they're looking at that model. It's like, wow, they're making money. The trains are packed. Why can't we do this instead of steam engines? So 1909, the McKean Car Company gave them a prototype motor car. It was a failure. <laughs> it was a huge failure. Uh, 1915, the JG Rail Company or JG Bro Company made this closed body double truck car for them. Uh, it was electric powered, it was a huge failure, so history repeats itself again. Uh, 1916 to 1921, they came up with a bunch of different gas powered motor cars, so I thought it was cool. Uh, all of our failures were scrapped. Now, in 1922, this is when it gets interesting, they ordered two of these motor cars from the Russell Car Company. Um, number 61 was the first numbered, and number 62 was the second numbered. Now, uh, 61 had a catastrophic failure. The wheel cracked in half, so they had to retire it and scrap it. Number 62 was no longer um, on order. It wasn't delivered. So uh, here's some quick stats on that. So um, number 61 could hold up to 28 people, 120 horsepower, 71 feet long with a baggage compartment, like a combo car. Uh, top speed was 20 miles an hour. Now, we go to all the way 1927. This is when it gets really interesting. So, number 61. This is a new number 61. 
totally different from the other one before. This is EMC's 61. Um, they had a single Winton 120 motor producing 275 horsepower, 15,000 pounds of um, tractive effort, and could go up to 20 miles an hour. Now, in 1928, they supercharged this thing. This thing is amazing. Uh, 1928, it had two Winton 106D motors producing over 440 horsepower, producing 29,000 pounds of tractive effort, just almost double of her older sister, and also could hold up to 57 passengers with a baggage compartment. So these two sisters ran up until the final days of the railroad, which is crazy. And I have one of the last trips documented in this book right here. I'll show you guys in just so a Guys, second. this is where I originally saw the doodle bugs when I was a kid. I had no idea what this thing was. Was it electric? Was it diesel? Was it gas? Had no idea. So this book right here, you can see on marks and pages to show you guys, is a lot of fun. Uh, there are the authors right there in red. And um, it's from Johns Hopkins. Um, so that's their publisher right there. And it says Gallagher Kelly. Those are the authors and photographers of the book. So we're going to go to the first red marking here. And this has some really cool info about the Maryland and Pennsylvania Railroad. Um, you can see right here, there's their limousine which is an old Plymouth track car. But here is some really cool stuff right here. Here is the MPA timetable in their book from the latest timetable. And this is from April 25th, 1954. So literally one of the last, um, if not the last timetable in use before they went abandoned in 54 to 55 and 56. So um, let's find some really cool photos now they have number 62 in here and here it is right here so you get this thing this is number 62 right there and these are just some really cool photos uh, this was a conductor and his family getting aboard number 62 and there's the engineer right there you can see how the windows would open and everything it's just really cool but yep 62 so some other photos that I found in here that I thought were interesting. Just flip some pages here. Um, here is a side view of number 62 with a boy, I guess his dad, watching this engine and it's parked. Uh, that is just so cool seeing that. You know, you can see the actual side profile, the vents and everything. And the model doesn't really have that, but we'll get into that. And then, oh, and here's the cab. What can I, how can I miss that? There we go. Just a very basic cab inside of 62. It's got a Johnson bar and everything, some gauges, a throttle up top, and the whistle cord or bell or horn cord right there. So there's a couple more in here that I found. And this is like its last journey. They did like a photo charter um, of this engine. So here's the interior of 62. Right there, you can see the baggage compartment with a couple of chairs that were reversible. And there's 62 on the side with a baggage car being towed behind it right there. So uh, I have one more page to flip. Yep, and here's number 62. Uh, during a two-hour layover in York, mailbags are transferred from a motor truck into the PA MPA's baggage car. So there you go, right there. So there's another picture of 62. So just a really cool engine. Uh, this is, the, like I said, it's last, um, you know, last trip. Here's someone actually getting water inside the cab. There's another picture of it arriving at a station. So yeah, it's like a photo run by back in the day. And then later on, this was retired. Oh, there's another cool picture of it going across the trestle bridge. So uh, this locomotive was actually retired in 55 stored in the roundhouse or engine house until 56 and then were scrapped in 56 both of them scrapped uh, this company bought them they recycled them scrapped them so really sad but let's turn you guys around let's get into this beautiful model and we'll go through some of the details i think they missed and some of the things they got right all right guys so here she is number 62 back from the scrap yard alive and well on the layout so 62, uh, a couple things. 
Uh, this is an original MTH tooling. So MTH restructured their companies, split some of their assets off, sold some of them to Lionel, Atlas, and Scale Trains. This is one of the toolings that MTH sold to Lionel. MTH originally made ProtoSound and ProtoSound 2 Doodlebugs in various road names such as B&O, Pennsylvania, uh, Union Pacific, also Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania. So this is a retooling from Lionel. It looks pretty good. It's just a little basic for what you pay. This model retails from Lionel for $399.99. So yes, $400 for this model. <laughs> it should be a little bit nicer than what it is uh, detail-wise, but it is a historical piece. And MTH only made number 61 in Rail King, not 62. So if you have the Rail King model, you know, you can run them both together. You have 61 and 62. Now, a couple things that they did wrong. First off, this bell is on the wrong side. The bell should be over here. I'm not going to mess with that. The bell is actually glued into the shell. I'm not opening up this thing. Everything works great. That's the only major flaw I can find. And also, I kind of wish they did more detail up front for the, the roof vents or the window vents like you guys saw in those pictures. That would have been really cool. Or at least have one of the windows open. Like these windows are technically open. Or you can see like how they have them slid down or slid up. But that's not how these windows open. They open like a hatch. So a little nitpicking there. But you know what? It's a pretty cool model. All right, guys. A couple of things I do like. The trucks are really cool looking. They have the ornamental springs. You can see the bearings there. The wheels are really nice and crisp. They're die cast wheels. Also in the cab, we have a crew figurine as an engineer. All right, guys. So here's a side view of the locomotive. Now, a couple of things that kind of irk me is that the windows are all blacked out. So you have like this plastic in here to hide all the electronics in there. I totally get that. I understand. But there's only one motor in this engine and it's in the rear. So if they're trying to use this plastic to hide the motor, they can honestly put the motor up here. We have lots of hiding spaces in there and then put the boards and such from here back. I'm not sure how big the, uh, the motors are for the Lion Chief Plus, but... I wish we could have had a couple windows that were open, not all of them with this, you know, yellow plasticky stuff, but everything does light up. I am thinking about putting crew figurines or people in there. It'd be kind of cool. So let's get this thing fired up. All right, guys, she's on the track. So let's give her some power and let's fire her up. Engine 62. There we go. And has a really nice gas sound engine. Turn her up a little bit. Now let's do some revs. And I'm using the TMCC remotes. I'm hitting numbers three and six. And there's our idle sound. With the horn and bell, you can also change the pitch. So here's the horn right now. So if I hit aux and the horn. Again, now we're going to give the bell. There we go. So uh, let's put it in reverse. It does like this weird horn pitch shift type of thing. But it's not me doing anything, it's just me holding the horn button. And then the brake sound here is actually really nice. So I mean, they, they put some effort into this. Um, on top of that, you get the marker lights that turn on. And in the rear, you get red marker lights. And then you can't forget the smokes. Let's do aux one, number nine. And the smoke unit's very quiet. And you also get these jets of smoke, which I thought was super cool. You guys can see that right there. So um, it's a great smoker. 
but I just love these jets of smoke right here. Just really cool. And um, it gave you a pipette in the box to actually fill the smoke unit with so you're not dripping smoke fluid everywhere. So you guys, let's hook up some cars to her. I'm only gonna hook up like one or two cars. And um, I really don't recommend running anything more than that just because it's only a one motor locomotive. You don't wanna burn it up. So we're gonna run um, a baggage car and a caboose. So here we go everyone, all aboard. <laughs> As I forgot to mention, this does have crew talk. So if you hit number seven. Match your name, match your name. Clear by Valor Carling. Right, Patty? Clear, Rose. Yardmaster, all handbrakes are knocked off. Can I roll? Over. Hold for my clearance. Tower out. So it has the tower con call and response. Tower, we're ready. Is it okay to pull? Over. Uh, Pull it, I don't care. We're going. Here we go.
Alrighty guys, that's going to do it for this run session and review of the Maryland and Pennsylvania number 62 Doodlebug from Lionel Trains, new for 2023. It's a cool engine, uh, runs nicely. I just wish it had that dual motor. I heard a couple times around the corner, it was like peeling wheels. So I really wish it had dual motors. I don't know what they're thinking on that one. Um, just, I don't know. I uh, also wish for 400 bucks, we got a little bit more um, detail work on the model like a swivel bell would have been nice. Doesn't have to be a swinging bell. You know, you hit the bell, the bell moves. I'm talking just a static bell that swings like a lot of other engines have. And that would have just been so cool. And also put on the right side. Come on guys. Um, but uh, having separate grab irons and stuff would have been really nice for this model. Just looking over sprung trucks. I know it's hard to do with a power truck, but just some more details. Give us our money's worth for 400 bucks, you know, we're hardworking people, and then I just feel like in my description before those motor cars, this is a closed body double truck car. That's how I feel right there in my notes. So, um, but anyways, guys, it's a runner. It sounds good. It does sound good. I'd give it that. It does sound really nice. And I will try to find a number 61 and MTH to uh, run on opposite tracks or whatnot. So anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give a thumbs up, give a comment below. If you're new to the channel, always consider subscribing. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys mean the world. Till next time, everyone. Happy railroading. We'll see you next time. See you guys.